Hey, what's up, everybody? It's been a little while, huh? Trying something out. Probably delete this, but we're taking a little walk outside while I talk. It's nice out. It's cold. It's good wind. The sky is very blue. You can see that. I'm digging it. So, I just want to talk a little bit about, like, living in a homeless shelter. Because, it like, parts of it are good, you know? And parts of it are bad. And I was, like, really tempted to make a pretty negative video. I've been sad lately. But I have been making, like, a lot of negative videos. And that, that could be part of what's getting to me. So, this is a change of pace here. Let's talk about being homeless in a homeless shelter and like the good and the bad of it right in particular my homeless shelter it's my shelter is not usual i've been in a few this is very much like kind of a hippie place and i lucked out it has to be like one of the better places in the nation i mean it can't be you know <laughs> and what it can't be but it has to be dude. okay you feel me it cannot be one of the best places but it Listen, it has to be one of the best places, right? So let's get on with this. The first thing about living in a homeless shelter is you're still homeless, but you're not as homeless, you know? Uh, street living, now I'm going to get some flack for this, but I've noticed a lot of people, like, who are homeless, not a lot, only a few, really, it's a minority. A few people who are homeless hate shelters, and they leave comments about that on my channel. Um... I know it's different for everybody, but I think a lot of those people, it's either like ego or trauma, you know? Like they went through something bad in a shelter or two and that turned them off to them. But a shelter shelter. You know, there's a shower there that you're expected to use. <laughs> That's kind of nice. It really is. It's, uh, it's really nice. There's electricity, you know? A lot of people live in an open area, but I have my own room. You can get your own room in a shelter. It's possible. You gotta hang in there, though. So that's the first thing. I'm not street homeless anymore. Uh, it's like the worst parts. Some of the worst chapters of my life right there. I really never liked that. That was always... I don't know how people do it. Actually, I think I do. Okay, real quick before I go into, like, something bad about living in a shelter. Let's finish off this good point. I'm going to sit in this little bench here. Right, no, I won't sit at the bench. I don't want to show the building behind me. We'll just show some glorious back view, even though someone smart enough could figure out where I am. You can come to my den of rats if you wish, but some of the areas are very beautiful in my den of rats. So, on that, like, yeah, just not being street homeless. That's a really... I, if you ever end up homeless... I know, like, people who haven't even have been homeless before, you hear things about shelters, and it's crazy. You know, it's it's the point where, like, you think of homeless people, and it's, it's just street homeless, right? Street homeless or worse, living under the streets or something in some places, you know? But that shit's the worst, dude. I won't say too much more about it in this video, but it's the worst. It sucks, and what I think it really is, is just, like, complacency, you know? Like... Do you remember any of you watching, like, maybe you were younger and you had, like, shitty parents or something? And, like, at some point, it just became so uncomfortable to leave your room. You probably didn't even notice it, but thinking back, you were like, why was I always inside? Why did it feel like the, the world was revolving around me? Like, what was the actual barrier to, like, me meeting people? And a lot of it was just I was scared to leave my room, I think. And so I never even realized that, but I just kind of internalized this. I'm not supposed to, like, be around people, you know? Like, I'm not supposed to. And so, I think it's something people internalize. You know, really early and using and hanging out with some people who have been homeless here and there. They'll talk shit, and they'll just say shit that's not true. Like, I don't know, you've probably heard it. Like, only rats end up in shelters. I've never even, I've never spent a night in jail, right? Yes. Save your money, dude. If you're homeless, go to a shelter. Okay, bad thing about the shelter. The people. Oh my god. 
it's a den of mental illness. I probably mentioned in a video before, there is a guy who thinks the crows work for the CIA and he throws things at the crows. I try not to yell at him. He's a, he's an older gentleman. He wears overalls and he has a messy crew cut of very white hair and he wears thick, thick plastic, thick black plastic glasses. And he always wears a white tank top and these black overalls every day. And on one hand, he's a pretty intelligent guy. Like, just listening to him, you can tell he kind of has at least like a basic grasp of engineering and a few other things. The thing is with him, if you talk to him for about five minutes or anything over that, it goes really quickly into like 4D conspiracy theories, right? So this is the same guy that my first week there, he was walking around with a Geiger counter, you know? But he's one of the better ones with talking about crazy people. Uh, even though it's a no-violence building, I mean, there are people there who are just institutionalized, bro. You ever meet someone who's institutionalized? They can't not be hard. They can't not act a certain way. If it, you know what I mean? It sucks to be around, dude. And then, so many of the other people on the opposite spectrum, they were just like, traumatized by people like that, you know, and just kind of addicts. It's a weird environment. Sorry, I'm not used to talking with people and walking outside. That's my second point. Uh, so imagine all of the issues that could happen in like any kind of dirty eight block radius. And just put that into like one building. Okay. There is trouble in a shelter. And it's a a lot of shelters it's harder to get away from you know it's true you're gonna be in this bunk bed situation with like 30 other people sometimes more dude and that can last for like a year you know about living in a shelter there are people to help you you know um if you're on the streets dude it's hard to keep up paperwork it's hard to charge phones there's a lot more chaos in that. I think the average person would go like, well, it's easy, right? If my phone's dead, I just find a place to charge it. I find a place to take a shower. If I can't get a job that week, I find another place just to pay me for the day. It, it sounds easy, but if you're one of those people who can relate to what I was talking about earlier, right? Where, where you get tripped up. Maybe you don't have a lot of confidence or you've been through some shit. And, so tired I don't remember the point I keep trying to make well there is help in a shelter you know not every shelter um, not every shelters ran right I know there's well it's bad let's stick on the good there's help at shelters there's always a shelter lead there's always some type of committee or board that goes over a shelter I've seen a lot of religious ones like Catholic associations and you know things along that nature so, you know, you can contact those people if something goes wrong. Um, also, generally, not always, and a lot of people act like what I'm about to say isn't true, and I know it is. Most shelters are not in the middle of nowhere. I mean, they might kind of be, you know, in a lot of ways, but generally, man, it's almost... I mean, I don't know how the world works. Maybe it's required by law, but it seems to always be by, like, a Walmart or something. You know what I mean? So there's something to do. If you're that type of person, and maybe, like, stress is difficult, not knowing what's going to happen day to day is, like, torture. That's not for everybody, dude. I promise you, it's hard. It's hard mentally and emotionally coming up with plans and ambitions. Little ones. Like, my plan and ambition would be... I'll put in a few job applications. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's everything hits harder. You got nothing going on. Everything hits harder. Your successes are, or they're more desperate, so they're more successful. But those defeats are more crushing, even when they're small. You know. So to imagine before you choose to do street living, you're that type of person who has trouble leaving your room sometimes. Well, now there is no room. Now everybody can see whenever someone's sleeping around you. Someone can just tap you, someone can mess with you, ask if you're okay. You could be having a 
the rare religious moment where you're looking up at the sky and thinking to yourself and just... You don't know where food's going to come from. You don't know if that place is going to call security and kick you out. You, you think the Walmart parking lot's good, but you don't know how much longer your car is going to last and it's getting really cold, you know? There's a lot of things to consider that are brutal. I think really what that response is of people refusing to think that it's okay to stay in a shelter is really just ego. Because you gotta kind of admit, like, life sucks and you're vulnerable to a point where you wanna go into one. Because there is structure in one, you know? There's always some type of structure in a shelter. They might, internally, they might be very reminiscent of zoos, but they are not indeed zoos. They are structured. Um, a lot of people aren't like me when they're... No, I'm not... Okay, a lot of people use benefits, and you can't get benefits when you're homeless, right? I'm one of the idiots who's learning what happens when you don't use any, because you're too good for them, and you're not one of those people. So that was good for me, too, actually. Um, that was just a good decision that I made. I get really sad a lot here in the shelter, but... I'm way happier than I was on the street, man, you know? And sometimes I, I get this issue like I was a kid again. I'm in the shelter and maybe that's part of a bad thing. I feel like I can't go back out in society, you know? Just staying in one, even if it's because you're broke. It's just like you feel like everyone sees you come in and out and you just hate yourself. It just happens. I know people are gonna say like, don't feel that way, but I guarantee if you were in my shoes, you'd feel it too. And that's kind of goes right into a bad thing is, yeah, there's help there, but it's embarrassing help. Isn't a great way to describe it, but that's the truth of it. It is embarrassing and I'll tell you why, even though it's help. Uh, from my perspective, you know, at one point in my life, I was a competent guy. You know, I was a young 17 year old and I joined the army. And I did a little bit of college before I burnt out fully and completely in glory, flaming glory over like, oh my God, over so long. But it's embarrassing, dude. You know, I've, in the Mojo video, I was telling you about the guy I live with Mojo. If you haven't seen those, interesting videos. Good stories. He's still doing pretty bad. I'll do an update at some point. But, you know, I mentioned a lot of people who help you. It's, it's, it's embarrassing to say. Look, they're like young interns. And they're like young, affluent interns. I mean, you... You, like... I don't know what I'm supposed to say to, like, make you level with me. But I'm embarrassed of myself. You know, I'm gonna I'm turn 35. I don't have a car. You know, I... I fucking, I've made so many mistakes. Like, I'm starting from such a zero that it's scary, dude. It's scary. You know, I'm... I get knots in my stomach whenever I think about even making a video or anything. It makes me want to vomit. If I have all week to make a video, it's just... Oh. <clears throat> well, that's another thing to consider. Um, it's embarrassing. If you let yourself get to that point where you're getting help in a shelter and like, even in my case, you're making contact with Veterans Affairs from shelter people and you're trying to get assistance as nice as they are. It's just, degrading is the wrong word, but that's the way it feels. Shame is a pretty good teacher, so listen to me. And now, good viewers, we're gonna end this video in the sad house itself. The last good reason and bad reason to be in a shelter. You're sheltered. All the reasons that I've said, you get food, you get support, you're not on the streets. Um, and this video is probably not helpful for most people. Just, Keep an open mind to that, okay? 
street living, you're going to need some, like, good friends, family, you know? It's got to be a situation where, like, you're living in your car and you have a job and, like, you know, a lot of people say they're living on the streets and it's kind of like that, right? They're really living in their car. And I think there's a huge difference because street homeless, get a shelter, dude. If you lose that car and you don't have a place, man, dude, street living's way different without a car, you know? And people try and stick to it and they try and root it out. It's not worth it. Let's stick to that point of, it's embarrassing, it's scuffed, but it's what you need, you know? Um, being in a shelter, it, it sounds so stupid, man, but if you need to be in a shelter, you need to be sheltered, you know? You need to be sheltered. It's good to have the support, man. It's good to have the food, and especially, like, if you're like me and you don't even want to contact Veteran Affairs for benefits, you just... For whatever reason, you know, you don't have to be the same as me. It doesn't have to be, like, bitter or jaded or anything. It can be whatever. <clears throat> and really, it's also a great thing because it is a massive ego check. Like, living in a shelter. I mean, it's, it's mostly with non-functional people. I mean, there are people here who are very close to not just... Like, bordering being, like, handicapped, mentally handicapped, 100%. And some people here are. I know they are. There, there are handicapped people here. Not just, like, mentally disturbed people and addicts. It's, there's a lot. There's a lot of mentally unwell people here. And part of the bad side, again, of being in the place where all that is, is, you know, that will compound on your other insecurities and stuff. Um, if you're, like, you know, anything like me, maybe just sensitive or thoughtful, like, living in a building with, I gotta say, 30% of this building, dude, is not functional in society, and not just, like, trauma, like, can't hold a job, can't have a conversation, can't not blow up, can't, not, like, w with medication, even. That's a tough reality. Like, living in a building, like a social services building, basically, it wears on your soul, dude. It's so tough. It really is. I don't know. I can't imagine the type of person who's here and doesn't notice it. You know, it makes you, it makes you feel like you're not normal. You know, you start questioning, like, my God, am I one of... Like, am I so brain damaged I just think I can participate in society? But really, you know? Especially if you don't have friends or family. You're just, like, alone with your thoughts and crazy people. That's pretty fucking brutal. I don't know exactly why that's brutal. I, I don't even know if I could really describe it to you. But it's pretty brutal. But it's way, it's way better than the streets way better like th again there's order yeah it's condensed it is condensed it's a noisy noisy place but there is structure and they generally do not accept people of certain crimes and they are very good about kicking people out for violence so i mean like and generally shelters do that you know like yeah people get in their face and they argue but it's does anybody touch you know and that's, it can be rough living in an environment like that. You know, you've, it's not easy, dude. It's not easy. But the way I describe it is, is you, in some ways, you're going to get more drama in a shelter. It's way better, man. As bad as I'm making it sound, it's a thousand times better. It's at least predictable. You're around, God, I don't even know if it's more stress. There is, I get it. There's a freedom and being street homeless, there's that possibility of finding that place where no one's going to fuck with you. And you have some like-minded people, and even if they're kind of grimy, they're not really pushing you to do anything. It's That block's going to deteriorate. More people are going to come. There's going to be a new store, and it'll change everything. It's just you cannot rely on stuff like that, you know? It's not harder being in a shelter. It's easier. But... 
it's still pretty tough, you know, and I, I guess just prepare yourself for that. If, if you're listening and you ever think you might be homeless, just really think about whether or not you want to waste time on the street, man. It's a sink. You'll probably end up, if you've got nobody, you're going to end up in a shelter anyway, you know. If I had just, dude, if I just swallowed my ego and lived in a shelter years ago, I'd probably be out of a shelter by now, you know? And I wouldn't be turning 35, like, questioning my own, you know, avoid it. Have a great day.